Ahoy friends! Welcome to Dory Dan's Small Boat Adventures. Pike and I are uh, out on Broad Sound, the mouth of the Parker River. We left from Newbury Landing around uh, 4 o'clock or so. We're right next to Dole's Island right now. And uh, that's Ipswich over there with the windmills. And we're about to round Cape Merrill, head up into the Plum Island River. That's Plum Island in the uh, distance, the background beyond the Cape. Kind of a busy day out here, a lot of power boats zooming around. But uh, we got a nice little breeze. A little bit on the light side, but uh, not bad. And we're headed for the Merrimack River. Mighty Merrimack. Mm-hmm. Alright, so as we come around Cape Merrill, we'll be a jibing pike. So if you just take in on the sail as it comes across and then let out on it, you know, when it, when it comes over, then, you know, we should be fine. It's such light wind, it's going to be an easy jibe. <clears throat> oh, I can see the uh, windmills down in Gloucester turning as well. Alright, here goes. Start to make the turn. Cross. <laughs> Always an adventure. <laughs> what was I supposed to do then? What did I do? Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. If it was windier, we would have had to have been a little bit more intense about it, but. I just kind of let it flop over with the uh, rudder too, so. All right, and um, so what you'll have to do is swap sides with the jib. So uh, if you want, you can probably even cleat off the main sheet, you know, just lightly cleat it to uh, maybe the downwind cleat on the uh, rail. So let out the... Uh and then we'll, yeah, the, you're going to have to let out on the other side and take in on that side. Oh yeah, we got a nice breeze. We're going to have a great reach. The length of, uh, length of the Plum Island River. There you go, you got it. And take in on that side. Looks like we need to loosen even further on the uh, on the upwind side. There it goes. Ah, oh, looks good. Oh, we got a nice breeze out here. History. Yeah. This is Greta's first venture on the Plum Island River. Really? Yeah. Awesome. First trip to the Merrimack, too, I'll, I'm guessing. It Wow, we've got 
kind of ideal conditions for it. Yeah, we're really moving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, try taking in about three or four feet of line on that main. See how we do. Awesome. That's good. That's good right there. Fair winds and following seas. Yeah. Yeah, all right. There's the hills of Newbury to the west. Yeah. I see where Henry the Navigator died. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Machinist. Yeah, yeah. He's a great shoot. Big guy. So much in the, the racing days. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. He never liked it when they kidded him about getting lost in Pine Island Trek up here. <laughs> wow. Those were the days, huh? Yeah, they are. Oh. Wow. I see, a, I see an email from Jeremy once in a while. Oh, good. Yeah, he's uh, pretty active on Facebook, too. Yeah. Oh yeah, master machinist. Yeah. He was uh, quite active in um, the uh, Model Engineering Society, uh, model steam engine, make building, you know, which I'd is. Like to meet my friend. Uh, built a beautiful steam engine. He... I don't know if I'm ever introducing my friend the Blacksmith. He may well have known him, you know? Well, everybody, they all know each other. Yeah, yeah. I bet he did. Yeah, it's quite possible. Henry, uh, what was his last name? Hmm. Polish name, I Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we could probably take in a bit more on that jib. Yeah, yeah, the jib line. Uh, other one, the down downwind uh, line. Take in on this one. Yeah, tighten in on that. Pull it right in tight. There you go. All right, and now take in on the mainsail. So we're gonna be headed a little bit upwind here. All right, keep
keep on taking in just until the loft comes out of the front edge there. There you go. Perfect. So right now, Pike, I'm just, you see I got one line in my hand, so I'm just, I'm using the sail to go up, to turn the boat upwind, and then I'm using the line to pull it back off the wind. See what I mean? So I'll slack off and it heads up into the wind, and then I can put a little bit of tension on and it'll head downwind. So I don't have to pull on both lines. Uh, out here. Gotcha, thank you. Now, did you guys ever come down through here when you were out in your skiffs and whatnot on the Merrimack as a kid, or did you stay in the Merrimack? We go down on Grape Island occasionally. Oh, okay. We camp overnight on the beach. Big clams, we need them. Ah. It was fun exploring Grape Island. The buildings were all falling down and Okay. And the feds were taking it over. And he, now, I don't know if I went there now, but just behold, I don't think they would see any signs of the building. Yeah. There was a hermit there. You probably heard of him. Really? Yeah. The guy lived there, an old man, and he got clams. And every couple of weeks he'd go into, uh, down, he grew all the and supplies. Oh, okay. And one, one winter he didn't show up for a couple of weeks and I got worried about him. Somebody went out to check on him and he been seriously sick, so he just was cold as hell and he, he just bundled up and uh, slept it out. I don't know if he's, he was conscious the whole time. Wow. But anyway, he survived. It's quite a story in the... This would have been about the 50s or somewhere around there. Wow. Oh. Then he died and they... They didn't... They didn't throw him out. The feds didn't throw him out when they bought it. Yeah. They just let him live out his life there. And my 
grandfather used to tell me wonderful stories about Great Island when he was a kid. And, uh, we'd take off Friday night, go down and go down from Salt Creek, and they'd play cards all night and baseball all day Saturday. <laughs> and, uh, have a dance, there were dances down there, there were hotels, and uh, come, there was a ferry running from Ipswich. This was the early part of last century. And then they'd play baseball again on Sunday, and then roll back. Uh. They, they tried to figure out the tides the best they could. I don't know if they used the sail or not, but they might have. Sounds like a good, a busy weekend <laughs> between the baseball and the dances and the rowing, huh? Yeah. Wow. But the, uh, if you look at, uh, let me see, what Nancy Weir, have you ever heard of her? Hmm. She wrote a book, The History of Plum Island. Okay. It's a small book, but it's well done. Really? And, uh, she tells about the Grape Island days when it was a big, uh, big tourist place, kind of for local tourists. Wow! Uh, everyone was down there, I guess. Yeah. There, were, there were a lot of buildings on Plum Island then. You can see old pictures, you see them. Not, not like up in the north end, but a house here and there. Boy, we're moving, Dan. Yeah. We're already in Palm Island. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, chugging along. I've, have we gone past the launching ramp yet, or is that up ahead still? Uh, up ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, up at the first parking lot. We used to, on the great Newbury Marsh, I would sometimes stop the other way and go to the right. So we get permission to launch down here. Parking lot number one, you know where the launch point is? Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, so one day we're, we're down there, and Dave Claridge was helping us out. And, uh, one of the rangers came down and really gave us a hard time. I guess his boss had a told him that we were going to be launching there. Ooh. And uh, Mr. Clarence gave it right back to him. Okay. And he ended up in court that morning. Really? He didn't hit him or anything, but he, he disobeyed him and told him what he thought of his, his ruling. Wow. And by that time, we were off. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> wow. You never went on the marsh, I think, huh? No. No, they'd, uh, they'd ended a couple of years before I uh, started. Yeah, we did it for 12 years. And, uh... I didn't start high school until 1990. So, oh, yeah, we, we ended about 88 or something like that. Really? Okay, so yeah, I didn't miss them by much. Once sometime, we, we, one trip we had, to, one trip was a different program. We'd come down from Haverhill and try to make it down the Merrimack, down the and then up the Parker in two days, but we never made it. We, we never got, we'd get as far as 1A and then quit because we were ending up the day on the second day. So one, one time we got in here and there was no water. Uh, right about here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Hackus, where the uh, tide splits.
Oh my gosh, yeah. Hopefully the green heads weren't out. No, no, this was, this was May. Oh, early in the year, okay. Good, so you weren't stranded in here with bugs. Yeah, we didn't have anything to do, so a couple of the kids were climbers. Really? That was the trip that really rained, but it was a warm rain. So we took the dories up on the bank over here, turned them over, and everybody was sitting under the dories. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I suppose it's a boat. It'll keep the water off whether it's coming down or right. coming up. Do you remember Mr. Goss and Mrs. Goss? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mrs. Goss volunteered to chaperone on that trip. And it was a hot day. They ran out of water, fresh water. Mm. And so she thought the ballast. Oh. The ballast um, five-gallon container was was probably fresh water and drank some of it. Oh. And ended up we pulled in the pine aisle and then they took her off to the hospital, but she was all right. Oh wow. Oh uh, yeah, try letting out about uh, eight feet of line. Okay. We're kind of with the wind right now. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is where the ramp is up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think we're getting close to it now. Well, it's right near, it's right across from parking lot number one. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, yeah, when we get close to the lot, then we'll be close to the... Yeah. I think somewhere the when the tide ebbs, it's going to a really good now, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. We're getting close to the split, that's for sure. Wow, they had the tunes bumping. The tunes, uh, the radio. Uh, yeah, a couple of, uh, one of those jet skis. Yeah, the two gals on that jet yeah, ski. They, a couple of jet skis went up the, the little river while we were rowing. Oh, really? So okay. Our quiet place was not quiet anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. They have a tendency of doing that. trip in this boat, a long day, but you can do it in a day if you got the right wind. Uh, a fair west wind would be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, if you're uh, headed up through, uh, if you're headed up through Fox Creek, it takes a lot longer just because you know you're in all the backwaters and everything. And the, Instead of going out in the open. Yeah, yeah, if you go out in the open, you just make it up pretty quick as long as you get good wind. But uh, yeah, I think I think we're pretty close to where the tide splits here. We must yep. be near the Hackus. 
Yeah, it looks like it's we're with the we're with the tide now. What is the hack? Uh, this the yeah yeah this area where there's all the little clumps of weeds and where, uh, where does the word come from? Ah, uh, good question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the hammocks. No. I'm not sure. But you can see all the little uh, yeah, the grass, the grass islands and everything. All right, well, guys, we uh, hit the split in the tide. The tide is now carrying us into the Merrimack River. Yeah, I do. Um, so I guess I'll uh, probably uh, sign off here and maybe start up another video when we get closer to the bridge. And uh, we'll take you guys through the bridge and into the Merrimack. So thanks for sailing with us today and we'll see everybody uh, next video and hopefully out on the water sometime soon. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. How many subscribers do you have then? Uh, probably uh, 400 or so now. Oh, yeah. Get a little close over here, man.